everyone, Matt here from Tyke to show you how to quickly convert your RESTful API into a GraphQL API using Tyke. So our first step, I'm logged into the, the cloud SaaS version of Tyke. But what we're going to do is once you've logged in, you're going to be able to come over here and you're going to be able to see on the side here, which is our beautifully uh, modeled version 3.0, which looks really, really sleek. You're going to see on the side here in the same location as before that you have your APIs under system management. So if you click on that, it's going to come up. The next thing for us to do is add a new API. So I'm going to click this here and you'll see that we have our GraphQL beta available right here. I'm going to click that. Now we have two options here. One is to proxy to an existing GraphQL service which we don't have an existing service. What we're going to be doing is actually composing a new GraphQL service from a RESTful endpoint. So I'm going to click Compose New GraphQL Service. And if we didn't want the API to be active right away, we could keep this as inactive, but that's okay. For our purposes, we'll keep it as active. What I'm going to use for this one is I'm going to use the Swappy API. So this is a Star Wars API, RESTful API that's available and uh, yeah, you're able to get back characters, planets, and starships from it. So what I'll do for this is I'm going to use this swappy.dev endpoint in order to uh, show you how Tyke's GraphQL Compose service works. So looking at this here, we will call this swappy. It'll automatically generate our API slug. I'm gonna click Configure API. Now we're gonna come down here to the bottom and to start for our purposes, we are gonna do a keyless API. So it's just gonna be open. So we'll click open keyless and we're gonna save that just to make sure that we have it. And then we'll come back in to edit. Schema, now we're gonna wipe this schema away here. And what I'm gonna do is type query because every single every single GraphQL API has to have a query object here. So we're going to do type query and it needs to be lowercase. And under that, we are going to actually have a um, people object. We'll say person actually. Person. And that person will have a, it's going to take an ID do ID and then the type will be ID here and it is going to return a person object. Now let's actually define this person object. So type person and here and now we're going to use this here. So let's think of what we want here in our person object. For our purposes, let's just use name, height, and mass. However, all of these that are available, we could be exposing. So we'll use name, height, and mass, and those are all strings. So name, string, height, string, mass, string. And the exclamation point is going to make sure that it's required. That's all that's there for. Okay. so. We have this here. Let me create this actually. This should be uppercase. And I'm going to update this. And that's going to save this portion of it. Now at this point we have our query defined. Sorry, we have our schema defined. But now we need to hook up some data sources to this. So let's come over to data sources. And you'll see here that we have data sources required for query type. Well, let's click that. Come over here. Come over to data source define data sources. We're going to turn that on. We are going to be using a REST API to, to proxy into this. So you could use a Tyke REST. So if you have an endpoint already set up on Tyke that's RESTful, you could use that. You could use a Tyke GraphQL endpoint if you already had one set up and build another one off of that. You could use a GraphQL endpoint that you've already created, not existing in Tyke, or you can use REST. We're going to use REST for this purpose. Now let's come back over here and this is our URL. Go like that. 
and it's going to be slash people slash people slash and then we're going to use the go template here a go template here to create this so every query has arguments so we will put arguments here and that's going to allow us to get that and then we want to grab the id of that and that's what's going to be populated so in this query here if we go back well i'll show you in a moment here but we what we had was under our query that person took a id that id is actually going to be exposed through this right here so that when when you do issue your request it's going to concatenate on here and make sure that this is fully formed now we're going to do a get and that is all that we need so now we'll update field and now you'll see that this over here person now we know it's derived from a restful api is where that data source is i'm going to click update here just to make sure everything is saved and now at this point we can come over to our playground what I will do here is create a query object. So we have a query object. And inside of that, I am then going to say that I want to retrieve a person. And that person is going to take an ID. And the ID we want is one, so we can use that there. And from that person that we retrieved, what do we want back? Well, we can grab back the name, the mass, and the height of the person. Now, when I click play here, this should retrieve from the RESTful endpoint, create a, get that RESTful data, and then basically parse that into GraphQL. So let's do the play here. And what we should see is a GraphQL response here. So now we see that it hit the RESTful endpoint, it grabbed our name, mass, and height, and formatted it as a GraphQL query response. And that is as simple as it is to create a GraphQL service from an existing RESTful endpoint with our new Tyke 3.0 beta GraphQL release.